There are three categories that I know of to find out your best colors or your color analysis results. The first way is through an in-person color analysis. The second way is through an online color analysis, and I include in that category online or phone apps. And the third way is through a DIY or self color analysis. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my thoughts on each of these three categories and things to consider or look out for for each. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Carol Braley of carolbraley.com. I was lacking some inspiration, say, in the winter timeframe, so January timeframe of this year around video content, hence why there was a slowdown in video production. But now I have this fresh new inspiration and I have a new wave of videos coming out. So like, subscribe, stay tuned to this channel for many more inspired videos. Um, I also have a new project coming out that I can't wait to share with you. I can't quite announce it just yet, but please stay tuned for more updates on my new project. So now let's move into what the intro said this video was about. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of my thoughts on an in-person versus online versus self uh, color analysis and things to look out for when hiring a professional for each or acting on the results for each because in many cases when you receive your results you act on them and it takes away financial and time resources uh, from you so it can be quite costly implementing these results so you want to make sure you're actually implementing the right thing for you. I will also say that the thoughts or opinions in this video are my opinions. Please come to your own conclusions and assess on your own through this video and other research what option is best for you and what particular professional is best for you if you're looking to engage with a professional to identify your best colors. The first way to find out your best colors or color analysis results is through an in-person color analysis. And to me, this is the best way to find out your best colors. Um, this is where you are draped with various fabrics in the most optimal lighting conditions to perform color analysis and you usually are set up to isolate your natural coloring and the reaction of your coloring to various fabrics is observed by the professional and frankly you um, to uh, identify ultimately what your best colors are which result in what's your best color palette. Um, one of the best benefits of an in-person color analysis is that you visually see what colors do and do not work best for you. So for instance, let's take the color bright orange, a very vibrant orange. Let's say for your whole life that you thought a bright orange made you sparkle and seeing in with the professional that the bright orange actually doesn't make you sparkle in optimal lighting conditions will actually uh, help you make that transition of your mind to actually realize, oh, bright orange is not optimal for me. The professional can walk you through it. So I can tell you through a computer screen, for instance, that bright orange doesn't uh, give off your best sparkle, but it's always best to see it uh, against you and be talked through it in the most optimal lighting conditions so the, that you actually can see that. So that is the benefits of an in-person consultation. You're set up in optimal lighting conditions. You uh, experience and the professional actually sees the uh, lighting conditions and uh, the results of fabrics against you in those lighting conditions. So. Uh, if you can get an in-person color consultation, that is always best in my opinion. And But sometimes I realize it's not possible because uh, you, there might not be a uh, professional in your particular geographic location. Um, I'm looking at my notes here like some other videos just so that I stay on track. Um, 
but there's some things that you uh, should consider before you actually hire a professional and act on their results. And the first one that I uh, advise is uh, look at what sort of training they have had. Um, you uh, can usually find on their bio, on their website, the program they have taken. You want to make sure that this is a recognized uh, or certified uh, program they've taken. Um, I also advise you, uh, secondly, to find out how much experience, practical experience, they have on the ground implementing this training. Because you can have all the training in the world, but you need to complement it with practical, hands-on experience. You don't want to be your color analysis professional's first rodeo. Uh, you want to uh, gain an understanding of how many clients they've seen, uh, perhaps look at their testimonials, etc. The next thing um, I advise you to find out before hiring a professional is uh, what color system they use. Because uh, if it is important to you that they use a 16 uh, color system versus a 12 color system or uh, whatever other system the professional may use, you want to make sure you get your results uh, that are in harmony with the system that you want to go shopping with. Um, but ultimately, all color systems should identify for you the values, intensities, and undertones of colors that make you sparkle because those are the three aspects of color. Um, the next um, thing that you likely will want to find out is what is and is not included in the color analysis appointment. So um, when you know your color palette, you will know ultimately what hair, makeup, clothing, and accessory colors make you sparkle. And so um, if it is important to you that the consultation talks about hair colors, for instance, you'll want to make sure that that's part of the consultation package. Another thing uh, that I advise you to look out for for an in-person color analysis is to find out what post-analysis consultation uh, packages or if there is post-analysis consultation services that are available to you, if the, that is important to you, if you think that you're going to have questions as you uh, implement this information. Now on to online color analysis or virtual color analysis and I'll include under this umbrella the online apps. This is where you typically uh, take pictures of yourself and send these pictures and accompanying information to an online uh, color analysis professional or a phone app and you are then sent results through email or through the phone app. The major disadvantage uh, to an online color analysis is what I referred to in the in-person section of this video is that you do not experience the colors on you. So if you thought for your whole life that you sparkled in bright orange and your online color analysis comes back saying differently, it's sometimes tricky for you to uh, visualize this without a professional walking you through this particular scenario in person. Other things to look out for for an online color analysis include uh, very similar to the in-person section. What is the training the color analysis professional has received and what is their experience implementing this training hands-on? But the difference with an online color analysis professional is I recommend that uh, they have experience with in-person color analysis uh, as well as online color analysis uh, because um, you know it's really the in-person experience that provides a very solid foundation to be able to quote through an online medium what uh, color analysis results are so for in this for my case um, everybody who has sat in my uh, chair for an in-person color analysis through the years I have looked at their eye pattern. So I have had a experience validating um, through in-person fabrics that a particular eye pattern actually matches uh, a particular color palette. 
So you want to look for similar, in my opinion, in-person experience with whatever uh, color analysis professional you choose for an online uh, analysis, or it could be a phone app. The next thing uh, you want to look for for an online color analysis is that um, unless you're an extremely expert photographer, um, it's only natural for lighting variations to occur in your photos uh, through either what the camera does or through shadowing uh, that happens when you take the picture, etc. So you typically want to uh, make sure the online color analysis has some sort of control in place to account for lighting variations that happen in pictures. Uh, so for instance, my control is eye patterns. Uh, eye patterns do not change with different lighting. So if you are sending uh, me clear pictures of your eye pattern, um, that really helps uh, validate the pictures that you've sent in terms of is the lighting accurate. Uh, for my particular virtual color analysis service, um, we will write you back if the lighting in the photos is not telling me the same story as the eye pattern. Well, depending on uh, which package you choose, uh, but uh, in a couple of my packages, we will write you back to make sure that uh, the photos we receive are accurate. But again, there's no way to guarantee an online color analysis uh, results. Uh, so to me, the best option is in person, but like I said, it's, it's sometimes not possible. The other thing, uh, like the in-person one, is you might want to find out what color analysis system the professional uses, if that's important to you, what is and is not included in the color analysis results, and you want to understand if there's post-analysis question support in uh, the package that you choose. And lastly, there's do-it-yourself or self-color analysis. This is where you typically follow along with videos or read up on the internet and make some decisions about your best colors and ultimately arrive at what you think your color palette is uh, through whatever process you've chosen. Um, the major disadvantage uh, to a do-it-yourself uh, color analysis is that uh, you are possibly projecting any of your likes, dislikes, what you've thought or been told throughout the years about your best colors, perhaps you, the patterns that you choose when shopping. For instance, if you always gravitate to brown, uh, perhaps uh, that impacts your assessment. So that is one of the major disadvantage, whereas working with a uh, color analysis professional or a phone app even, it's really an unbiased view. All I'm saying is perhaps you're listening to your mind over your soul because um, your soul, your intuition, gut, etc., will guide you to your best color. So if you are tuning into your gut um, during a self-analysis, hmm, that potentially could work out to match what actually is your best colors. This in general, when you're doing your self-color analysis, it's also your first rodeo or somewhat your first rodeo, whereas if you've engaged with a color analysis professional, it likely is not their first rodeo. Uh, they have experience in training, uh, identifying what best colors are on people. Um, also, ask yourself, what is the information you're relying on for your self-color analysis? I have seen a ton, and I mean a ton, of incorrect information on the internet and even YouTube about uh, color analysis. And so you want to ask yourself, are you listening to a trained, experienced professional when you're um, doing your self-color uh, analysis? Um, some ways to self-color analyze yourself include quizzes, and I'm not against quizzes, but um, what a quiz may think is porcelain or warm brown hair may be different than what you actually uh, think is warm brown versus porcelain, etc. So it's, um, it's aligning what the quiz defines as these uh, 
categories to what you actually define. That is tricky. And some of my final thoughts about do-it-yourself color analysis include the vein test. Um, I don't think this test is reliable. I've seen a ton of warm undertone uh, clients who have come seen me in person who have blue veins around their wrist. Um, I personally also, uh, for my online analysis, take uh, or ask for pictures from below the elbow to the wrist, but I actually don't use these to look at the vein test. I actually use uh, those photos to have a picture of somebody's coloring that may be unimpacted by environment, so like the sun, uh, just to have another validation tool besides a facial picture. So um, if you are relying on the vein test for do-it-yourself color analysis, I would suggest uh, doing also other tests to validate what you think your veins tell you. Uh, some other thoughts are around pictures of celebrities um, and uh, out there on the internet I know people comment on uh, what they think a particular like, celebrity is in terms of color analysis results. Um, frankly, unless that celebrity has been uh, draped uh, in uh, natural daylighting, uh, you really don't know what their color analysis results are. Um, so the person who may be posting these pictures uh, and commenting on their color analysis results um, likely hasn't color analyzed them. So I wouldn't use celebrities as a reference to identify what your color analysis results are. The other reference that I wouldn't use is looking at people similar to your cultural background and making some decisions because color analysis is based on underlying quality of color, in essence your genes, and their underlying quality of color and their genes may be very different from yours. So there are some final thoughts on the do-it-yourself color analysis uh, process. Um, I hope this video has uh, helped you decide what uh, type of analysis works best for you and also gives you some questions to find out before hiring a professional and acting on the results of any of these uh, color analysis options. Have a fabulous day.